What is up, football world? The Nations League is about to start, and I got a feeling that not everybody is interested enough in that. So the Nations League is a competition that will replace the international friendlies. But why do we need another competition? We already got the qualifiers. Well, that's a good question you ask, and I'm here to answer it. I think the Nations League is quite interesting, because it will replace the friendlies. I mean, let's be honest. Who wants to see a friendly between France and Gibraltar? I mean... You know, it's clear that France will trash them 8-0. We will just get really good matches between teams that are equally matched. No more friendlies. That's a good thing. I mean, I get it. Um, top players get injured mostly in international breaks and that is terrible for the club teams. And it is even more terrible if they get injured in a pointless friendly. This way, if they get injured, they will get injured in a legit competition. So they would have something to fight for. And on top of that, it's another way to qualify for the Euros or the World Cup. But we'll get to that later. So, what is the Nations League? Let's start with the logo. So, as you probably know, the logo is this one. And it is simply just the flag with some other random flags on it. I'm sure you've probably seen it a bunch of times. But, yeah, I mean, it's uh, just a logo. <laughs> it's a simple flag with many colors. And you can basically create any European flag if you take the colors of the big flag. As you can see, it got uh, horizontal stripes of the colors of the leagues. League A, B, C, D, red, blue, green, and yellow. And of course, League C is the most important one yet. <laughs> Until my team, of course, qualifies for League B. A couple of weeks ago, the official ball for the Nation League has been released. It looks like this, and it reminds us a little of the Brazuca ball. Uh, not only by the design, but also there's those colors that, that clearly show the Brazilian flag. The uh, anthem of the Nations League is also quite mm, nice, I would say. Like It's like uh, really simplistic, nothing really... It's not like the Champions League <laughs> anthem, it's not epic like that. It's a little like the Europa League anthem, if you ask me. And it also reminds us of uh, the soundtrack of that famous uh, 2002 World Cup game. I suppose the Nations League anthem won't be played before the match because, you know, the national anthems of the teams will have to be played. So probably it will be played only in the promos and stuff. So the trophy of the Nations League is something that I actually really like. The trophy got the silhouette of that Europa League trophy, but it continues on like a flag put together, like, you know. It's made of silver and at the inside it's colorful, which looks really nice actually. So many people... <coughs> So many people and specialists have complained about the format because it's really difficult to understand. And it is a little at first. <laughs> As you probably know, UEFA.com has uh, released a video explaining the format of the Nations League. But I mean, if you don't understand it from that, just watch it a bunch of more times or I will explain it to you right now. Nations League is divided in four different leagues. Leagues A, B, C, and D. Each league has four separate groups consisting of three to four teams. As we know from other basic league structures, the first team of each group uh, promotes to the next higher league and the lowest team in that group relegates to the next lower league. The four group winners of League A will qualify to a playoff similar to the Champions League except um, after the two semi-final legs they will have a third place playoff and then the grand final. 
and probably the most important thing for tinier nations and smaller teams um, is that uh, each group winner will, will advance to another playoff to uh, qualify for the next big tournament for like for the Euros or the World Cup, whatever is up next. In this case, it will be the Euros, of course. Like I said earlier, there will be a lot of good matches in the Nations League because of the rivalries, of course, and the strength of uh, each team. In League A, some interesting matches might include like uh, Germany-France and Germany-Netherlands. The just awesome matches. Also uh, Portugal, Italy and Spain, England. I don't think I have to say much about that. <laughs> League B, I noticed only one uh, historic rivalry and that is uh, the Czech Republic or Czechia against Slovakia. And as you probably know, they used to be one country. In League C, there is one friendship rivalry between Estonia and Finland, two countries that really um, get along with each other. Even uh, Estonia wants to be a part of, of uh, Scandinavia, but as we all know, it's a Baltic country. They even got their um, Nordic flag made up so that they would be a part of the Nordic countries. However, another rivalry will be between Romania and Serbia. Obviously because they are neighbors and there's always been a historic rivalry between uh, Romania and Serbia or if you want uh, Romania and Yugoslavia. Speaking of Yugoslavia, in the same group of League C, we have Serbia and Montenegro, that used to be one country, twice. <laughs> as I mentioned, there's Yugoslavia and there's Serbia Montenegro, they used to also be one country and one football team at one point. I believe it's time for me to make some predictions for this first edition of the Nations League. Obviously, the first pick of winning the whole thing will be France, because obviously they are the world champions, and maybe the second pick would be Portugal being the European champions. Well, uh, other potential group winners would be um, like Belgium, but hope hopefully Iceland because you know everybody loves Iceland. In in the other group, it will be obviously Spain or England or Croatia. It could really be either one of them. First group of uh, League B, it can really be won by anyone. Also. Uh, the second one probably will be won by Russia, uh, the third one by Northern Ireland, and the last one by Wales, I suppose. Big C, well that's it's a little tricky. The first one probably by Scotland, uh, then Greece, Slovenia, and Romania. Uh, League D is really hard, actually. Uh, the first one probably Kazakhstan, then the second one uh, definitely Luxembourg. Because in the last uh, Europe uh, qualifier campaign for the World Cup, they drew nil-nil against France. And uh, they <coughs> read, an act, uh, read an article, actually. Um, it said uh, why the Luxembourg team was so good. Because uh, in, back in 2004, they somehow, somehow reset their whole uh, youth system. And under 19s from back then are in the top team right now. So they are really, really good. And obviously, it's uh, very probable that Luxembourg will win that group. I really hope that uh, Moldova will also have something to say against that, about that. The next group, um, my favorite would be Azerbaijan, but hopefully Kosovo. Because uh, and in the last one, uh, the favorite would be probably Macedonia, Mac Macedonia, Mac former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. To not angry any Greek people here. Uh, but hopefully it will be Gibraltar, <laughs> because you know I really want to see them in the playoff and play against maybe um, Kazakhstan and win it and go to the Euros, you know. So yeah, uh, that's basically it for today's video. Conclusion: I um, really have big hopes for this new uh, competition, and I really want to see good matches and good results for Romania. I'll be back after match day 2, I'll see how the teams uh, did and I'll either confirm or uh, edit my predictions <laughs> I'll see how I did. If you like this video be sure to leave a like and a comment and also uh, don't forget to subscribe of course. So um, yeah, see ya!